Shabbat Shalom and Boker Tov and good morning. Shabbat Shalom lekulam, Boker Tov. Let's have a word of prayer. Bon itpalel. Abba, we thank you for today. Abba, modim lacha avur ayom. Lord, this is the day that you have made. Don ze ayom shasa donai. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Anachnu nismach ve nagil abo. Lord, I pray you would release your anointing over all of us this morning. Don ani mitpalel shata tishachrer et hamishicha shelcha aleinu aboker. Lord, pour fresh oil on Joseph and myself. Shpoch aleinu adon shemen meranen. Lord, would you anoint your word this morning? תמשך את הדבר הבוקר. Lord, would you minister to us by your Ruach HaKadosh? תשרת אותנו ברוח קודשך, אדון. Lord, let the name of Yeshua be lifted up high today. כדי ששמו של ישוע ירומם היום. בשם ישוע המשיח. אמן. בשם ישוע אדוננו. אמן. אמן. It's good to be a קהילה together. טוב להיות ביחד בקהילה. And... Interestingly, we don't have, we have visitors, but we don't have big groups visiting us today. And I think the Lord has designed it that way today. Because I think he wants to speak to us as a kahila. Um, while we were worshipping, I... For some reason, remembered something from my childhood. It was a little embarrassing, but it was a, a, a moment when I was in my synagogue in East London. And it was during the time of Hanukkah. And I was asked as a 12-year-old boy to light the uh, candles. Only this was a huge uh, Hanukkiot. And I was still growing, so I hadn't got to the height I am today. And in order to light the candles, I had to go up and stand on a chair. So I was helped up the chair. <laughs> and then I remember as I was lighting the candles, the wax was dripping and it was landing on my hand. It might have been the first time that I realized that going up is challenging. I want to speak this morning on a theme which is like an invitation to all of us. Come, let us go up. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2 and from verse 2. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. והיה באחרית הימים נכון יהיה הר בית אדוני בראש ההרים ונישא מגבעות ונערו אליו כל הגויים. Many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion... Shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Walchu amim rabim v'amru lechu v'naale el har Adonai el bet Eloi Yaakov v'yorenu medrachav v'nelecha be'orchotav ki mitzion titzet Torah v'dvar Adonai miYerushalayim. And now, if you will turn in the Brit Hadasha in the New Testament, עכשיו בואו נפנה לברית החדשה. To Philippians chapter three. אל הפיליפים פרק גימל. And from verse 12, Paul is speaking to the believers 
in Philippi, Philippi. And he says this. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Messiah Yeshua has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward to those forward, to those things which are ahead. אחי, עדיין אינני חושב את עצמי למי שהשיג, אבל דבר אחד, אני שוכח את השם מאחוריי ונחלץ קדימה אל מה שלפניי. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Messiah Yeshua. אני רץ אל המטרה כדי להשיג את הפרס שבקריאה של מעלה, של למעלה קריאתו של אלוהים במשיח ישוע. It is an established fact that the higher up we find ourselves as human beings, the air becomes thinner. Breathing becomes more difficult. We use more energy when we make a climb or an ascent than when we are going down. A couple of months ago, uh, Helen and I uh, spent a day and we visited Beit Shan. And there's a big tell there. A big hill. And the archaeological, uh, some of the archaeological remains are at the highest point. It was a warm day. There's a lot of stairs. A lot of steps going up. When you look there, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I will only look at you. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of stairs. You are madrigot. And the effort going up was very challenging. But the rewards were in the stunning views once we made it there. Uh, we were overlooking actually the Jordan Valley which is in the news at the moment. And we saw these amazing finds at the top of this tell. When any of us come to worship here, we are fulfilling Isaiah chapter 2. Have you noticed that when you come here, you have to come up? Uh, I often walk from our home in the village and come here walking up. As soon as you uh, enter the gates here, you are going up. I remember a, a couple of years ago, I could get out of breath doing that. אני זוכר שלפני כמה שנים הייתי מקבל קוצר נשימה כשהייתי עולה. אבל עכשיו שאני רזיתי זה קל לי לעלות. כשאנחנו מגיעים לקהילה אנחנו תמיד עולים למעלה. מה קראנו בישעיה ב'? That what is going to happen will happen in the latter days. In the latter days, the Lord's house will be established on the top of the mountains. It's not just talking about Jerusalem. Because mountains is plural here. It says all nations shall flow to it. All the nations are going to come up. People will say, come. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. 
I think a lot of people who are coming from the nation say, "Come, let us go up to Kehillat Hakamel." I think that there are many people who are coming here and saying, "Let us go up to Kehillat Hakamel." To the house of the God of Yaakov. 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 I mean, it's going to take a bit of effort to go up, but God will teach us His ways if we go up. The Doresh ma matz la alot lemal, but Elohim ilamed otanu et drachav im naser ken. And He will cause us to walk in His paths if we're prepared to go up. Ve'u igram lano li'talech be'orchotav im achen naale lemala. God is saying to us this morning. Elohim omer lano aboker. Very clearly, come, let's go up. Be'viru omer bo naale nelecha. God wants to teach us His ways. Elohim wants to teach us His ways. And as we And as we well know, His ways are not our ways. And as we well know, His ways are not our ways. We shall walk in His paths. And as we well know, His ways are not our ways. And as we well know, His ways are not our ways. the mountain ולטפס על ההר it takes a while to get up the mountain אז לוקח זמן להגיע לפסגה it's not an overnight experience it's a process of time אז את לא חוויה של לילה אחד זה תהליך מתמשך when the jewish people were making their pilgrimage to jerusalem כשאם היהודי הם עלו להתפלל בירושלים when they were fulfilling the biblical command to go up to jerusalem at the time of the three key biblical feasts כשהם הגשימו את המצווה שהמקראית לעלות לירושלים בשלושת החגים הנדרשים מהם פסח פסובה פסח שבועות פנטקוסט בשבועות Sukkot, tabernacles. Be'chag ha-Sukkot. They were approaching Jerusalem, and from wherever they approached it, they had to go up. הם היו צריכים בדרך לירושלים, מאיפה שהם באו לעלות למעלה. If you're going to fulfill God's command, you have to come up. אם אתם רוצים להגשים את מצוות אלוהים, אתם צריכים לעלות למעלה. But it's not a journey that we make on our own, it's a journey we make together. When Yeshua met with the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4, I'd like to think that that was a one new man meeting. There was the Jewish Messiah with his disciples. משיח היהודי עם התלמידים. It's the heat of the day. וזה היה בחום היום. He sends them into the village to get food. הוא שולח אותם אל הכפר להביא מזון. And there he meets with a Samaritan woman. ואז הוא נפגש עם האישה השומרונית. And we know that all the barriers were broken down when they met. ואנחנו יודעים שכל המחסומים נפלו כשהם נפגשו. It was a man and a woman. זה היה גבר ואישה. Now we do have men's meetings and women's meetings. יש לנו אספות גברים ואספות נשים. But I think we enjoy being together sometimes. אני חושב שאנחנו נהנים להיות ביחד לפעמים. All of the barriers were broken. כל המחסומים נפלו. The barrier between a Jew and a Samaritan was broken. המחסום בין יהודי לשומרוני נפל. This was a significant barrier because the Jews and Samaritans didn't talk to each other. זה היה מחסום משמעותי כי היהודים והשומרונים לא דיברו ביחד. And they have, of course, a discourse that we know well, a conversation that we know well. ואנחנו יודעים על השיחה שהתנהלה ביניהם. I got to simplify my English. אני חייב לעשות אנגלית פשוטה כדי שנבין. But one of the key messages that comes out of that time of Yeshua with the Samaritan woman, אחד המסרים המרכזיים שנבע בשיחה בין ישוע לשומרונית, is that Yeshua says in verse 24, ישוע אמר בפסוק 24, brothers and sisters, אחים ואחיות, he's saying it to us today, והוא אומר לנו היום, God is spirit, אלוהים הוא רוח, and those who worship him, והעובדים אותו, must worship him in spirit, and in truth. חייבים לעבוד ולהשתחוות ברוח ובאמת. True worship breaks down barriers. השתחוויה אמיתית מפילה מחסומים. True worship brings unity. השתחוויה אמיתית מביאה אחדות. And where there is unity, וכשיש אחדות, 
We read it in Psalm 133. That where there is unity, there he commands the blessing. Isn't it interesting that Psalm 133 is a psalm of ascent? That unity involves going up. God calls us to come up towards him and his presence. And part of that upward journey is doing it together in unity. And when those Jewish people were making their ascent to Jerusalem, they would recite the Psalms of Ascent. They would declare this as they made the upward journey. Oh, when we sing together, What we're really singing and saying and declaring is we're going to go up together. Last Shabbat, during our worship service, we sang together in Hebrew, How Great is Our God. It's a song that is sung all around the world among believers. If you go anywhere in the world and they start singing it in their language, invariably you start singing it in your language. We had a lot of nations represented here last week. And as we worshipped and sung that song, something glorious happened. The presence of God seemed to come in a special way. I mean, we somehow momentarily laid everything aside. Whatever things have been preoccupying our minds were put to one side. As God's presence flooded us as we worshipped, nothing else seemed to matter at that precise moment. Um, it's okay if you miss the moment because it's just the beginning. But we were together and we worshipped together and the presence of the Lord came and we did some of that this morning too. As we worshipped, God was teaching us his ways. God wants to pour out of his Holy Spirit among us and upon us so that, you know, as it was in biblical times, the ministers couldn't minister because the presence of God was so glorious in and among them that all they could do was to just be in his presence. I am convinced this is what God wants from us. I believe with my whole heart that he wants freedom to move among us like never before. I went to the men's meeting last Sunday. Now I know some people have a rest day on Sundays. But it's a working day up here. And it was a particularly busy day that day for me. I think I drove up and down the mountain more times than I care to actually count. I think the time I got home, I had one hour before I'd have to come out to go to the men's meeting. It's a lot of time. When I got home, I had one hour before I'd have to come out to go to the men's meeting. 
And worse still was that the men's meeting would be happening while my football team, Liverpool, were going to be playing. And the thing that was worse than that was that the women were at the time that the team of Liverpool was playing. What a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. And during that one hour of rest, I, my phone rang five times. It wasn't much of a rest. But we got into the meeting. We started to worship. Andre led us in worship. Freedom was on the, on the bongos. And we began to get into the presence of God. This is how you can be a woman and still be in the man's meeting. Because I'm telling you about it now. Mind you, I heard in the ladies' meeting a man was present. I don't want to mention any names, Danny. I don't want to mention any names, Danny. <laughs> I was translating. I get inside information, you know. And then Pastor David shared a, a message. And the presence of God came. And I felt revived and it had nothing to do with the pizza we ate. <laughs> God's presence came. I mean, it was tangible, it was real, it was powerful. For the whole of the meeting, I didn't feel tired. And God was so faithful that after the meeting, I discovered Liverpool had won. There is so much more to come from him among us. Revivals have occurred in history throughout the world. We know right now there is a great revival going on in places like China and India. In the United States of America, where they speak a form of English. <laughs> In Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles. The city of angels and I believe tacos. Yes, Mexican food. <laughs> In 1904, uh, over a hundred years ago, there was a great revival. Uh, a great outpouring through which so many Pentecostal congregations grew out of the, that particular revival. Hungry believers who sought the presence of God. People weeping and repenting. In meetings. The power of God moving freely among all people. Two men who were mightily used of God in that revival. Frank Bartleman. Frank, love Frank Shalano. No, not this Frank. <laughs> We're still praying for this, Frank. Um, Frank Bartleman. Frank Bartleman. And William Seymour. William Seymour. And the only reason I mention their names is because one man was white and one of them was black. And when the Holy Spirit moves, in great power, he breaks down those racial barriers that existed in America in those days. Meanwhile, in the same year, there was another revival breaking out. It happened in Wales, or on the west coast of Britain. There was a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit that led to what we now call the Welsh Revival. People were crying in the meetings and repenting before God. I always, uh, when I was growing up in England and I would watch uh, rugby, 
כשגדלתי באנגליה ושיחקתי רגבי, for those of you who are American, rugby is using the same shaped ball. הרגבי זה עבור האמריקאים, הם משתמשים בכדור אובלי כזה. The same tough tackling. וגם יש את הכניסות החזקות אחד בשני. But of course in Britain we don't need pads. אנחנו לא משתמשים במקלות. And the Welsh play it reasonably well. והוולשים משחקים טוב. And they always sing loudly before the meetings. The games rather. תמיד הם שרים בשירה גבוהה לפני המשחקים. And your hair stands on the back of your head when you listen to the Welsh singing. והשערות שלכם נעמדים כשאתם שומעים את השירה הוולשית. And even today the choirs who sing, the Welsh choirs, sing very wonderfully and very powerfully. אפילו היום המקהלות בוולס הם שרים באופן... נפלא ואופן מאוד יפה. This was as a result of the Welsh revival. זאת הייתה תוצאה של התחייה בווילס. That's where they learned to sing like that. שם הם למדו לשיר כך. That's where they got their passion from. ושם הם קיבלו את התשוקה והלהט. It was because of the historical move of the Ruach HaKodesh in Wales at the turn of the 20th century. בגלל התנועה ההיסטורית של רוח הקודש בווילס בתחילת המאה ה-20. One man of God who witnessed that Welsh revival איש האלוהים אשר חווה את התחייה בווילס was ריס האוולס, the great intercessor. המפגיע המפורסם ריס האוולס. People traveled from all over the world to get to Wales. אנשים נסעו מכל חלקי תבל להגיע לווילס. The story is told of a man who decided to go to the Welsh revival. יש סיפור על אדם שרצה להגיע לתחייה בווילס. Now, it was 1904. זה היה ב-1904. So he got on a steam train. אז הוא עלה על רכבת של עדים. He got on this train in London. והוא לקח את הרכבת ללונדון. And then he took the journey by train to Wales. ואז הוא המשיך עם הרכבת לווילס. He only knew that the revival was in Wales. He didn't exactly know where it was. The train pulled in at the train station. And he decided to ask somebody the way to the Welsh revival. And he saw a slightly overweight policeman. שוטר שהוא שמן. You know, a policeman who'd been eating a few too many Welsh rabbits, I guess. אז הוא אכל הרבה ארנבות בווילס. And he went up to the police officer. והוא התקדם אל הקצין משטרה. And he said, excuse me, sir, could you tell me where to go to be at the Welsh revival? הוא אמר, סלח לי, אתה תוכל לומר לי איך להגיע לתחייה בווילס? And the police officer smiled. והקצין משטרה חייך. And he said, sir. אמר לו, בחור. And he tapped his tummy and he went, it's in here. הוא אמר שהתחייה פה בבטן שלי. It's in here. זה בפנים. Because true revival isn't limited to a place. התחייה האמיתית זה לא מוגבל במקום. And those who are touched by the Holy Spirit are not limited to the place that they're touched. אלה שנוגעת בהם רוח הקודש הם לא מוגבלים במקום שהיא נוגעת בהם. But they carry the revival with them wherever they go. הם נושאים את התחייה איתם לאן שהם הולכים. God wants us to take what he's going to do among us and carry it throughout Israel. אלוהים רוצה שניקח את מה שהוא נותן לנו ולהביא אותו לכל ישראל. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Even in East London, We, we experienced revival there over a period of three years. Many people were coming and immediately being filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. Many people were experiencing deliverance from all kinds of ailments and addictions. הרבה אנשים חוו שחרור מאלמנטים רבים של התמכרות ודברים אחרים. It was a powerful time. זה היה זמן אדיר ונפלא. We had a pastoral team similar in number to the pastoral team we have here. היה לנו צוות של רואים דומה במספר לצוות שלנו כאן. And of course, when the presence of God would move like that among us and people were needing to be prayed for, <laughs> 
we as, as, as the leaders would move around the congregation and lay hands on people and pray for them. אנחנו כמנהיגים הסתובבנו בקהילה ושמחנו ידיים והתפללנו בשבילם. עכשיו תקשיבו לי טוב. זה היה זמן אדיר וזמן מאוד חיובי. אבל דבר אלוהים אומר לנו שאנחנו ממלכת כהנים. There was a particular evening when the presence of God came powerfully among us. היה ערב אחד מסוים שנוכחות אלוהים סחפה אותנו באופן נפלא. And there were people who needed to be prayed for. והיו אנשים שהיו זקוקים לתפילה אישית. So we started to move among the congregation praying for people. אז התחלנו לנוע בקהילה ולהתפלל עבור אנשים. And then the presence of the, and the power of the Holy Spirit became so strong. ואז גבורת רוח הקודש הייתה כל כך חזקה. Well, I only remember that I went on the floor and, and had to lay down. אני זוכר רק שאני הייתי צריך לשכב על הרצפה עם הפנים למטה. I had to stop praying for whoever I was praying for and get before the Lord. הייתי צריך להפסיק להתפלל עבור אנשים ורק ליפול בפני האדון. What I didn't realize at the time מה שלא שמתי לב אז was that all of the leadership were on the floor. שכל המנהיגות הייתה על הרצפה. Every single pastor was on the floor before God. כל רועה מסוים היה על הרצפה. הם לא היו בתנוחה שהם יכלו להתפלל עבור מישהו. אחת הנשים בקהילה אמרה לי לאחר מכן, אמרה לי, באמת למדנו משהו הערב. כי אנחנו חיכינו לכם, ההורים, לבוא ולהתפלל עבורנו. כולכם הייתם על הרצפה. משתחווים לאדון. ואז אנחנו, שלא היה לנו מה לעשות, התחלנו להתפלל עבורכם. כשגבורת רוח הקודש מגיעה, כשרוח הקודש עושה את מה שהיא רוצה לעשות בקרבנו, גם במעיינות התחתונות וגם בעליונות, יהיה רגע. When we will be on our faces before the Lord. שאנחנו ניפול על פנינו בפני אלוהים. And then we will all need to be praying for each other. ואז אנחנו רק נתפלל אחד עבור, או לא נזדקק להתפלל אחד עבור השני. People who love God and truly want to worship and serve Him. אנשים שאוהבים את אלוהים ובאמת רוצים לשרת אותו. Develop a hunger to be in His presence. הם מפתחים רעב להיות בנוכחותו. Of course there are sometimes people who are among us. יש זמנים שאנשים בקרבנו, בינינו. Maybe this is you sometimes. אולי זה אתם לפעמים. Who feel condemned when their hunger is not satisfied. מרגישים מין משפט כזה כשהרעב שלהם לא מסופק. And they feel a sense of coldness in their hearts. הם מרגישים הרגשה של קרירות בלב. But God wants to teach us His ways. אלוהים רוצה ללמד אותנו את דרכיו. It was Karl Barth, the Swiss theologian. קרל בלף, התיאולוג השוויצרי. Who said when he was preaching to prisoners in a jail בכלא, that God is not only our provision, לא שלנו, He's the hunger as well. That the very hunger that you feel, that kind of, even if it's coldness, קרירות, the hunger you feel inside of you at times, For the presence of God. הרעב שאתם מרגישים בקרבכם לנוכחות אלוהים, God put it there. אלוהים שם את זה שם. It's godly to feel hungry. זה משהו חסידי להרגיש רעב לאלוהים. Problem in many congregations is too many people are satisfied. בהרבה קהילות יותר מדי אנשים מסופקים. We need to have a godly dissatisfaction. אנחנו צריכים להיות עם חוסר סיפוק חסידי. It was Yeshua who said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, recently our community has been attacked. There have been a few incidents of harassment upon our Kehillah. הייתה, הייתה, היה הרבה מצוקה והפרעות לקהילה. We've had 
some situations that I cannot actually speak in a public place about. But many of us know that we have been under some kind of assault. If one person in our community is under attack, we're all under attack. But there have been two or three incidents recently. There was one incident that had a, an indirect uh, impact upon myself. And for two days I felt as if I was carrying a huge heavy weight, like I was carrying a donkey on my shoulders. <laughs> because the enemy is assaulting us. And because the enemy will listen in to what we're doing. You know, we are blessed to be assaulted. may not feel like it. I didn't feel that way for two days because I was in pain for somebody who was under assault. But I believe that when we come under assault like this, you can, uh, it seems to me that you can see what the enemy is doing because of what we as a community are doing. At the beginning of this year, we engaged in a 10-day fast. We were pressing in together because we knew we had an upward journey to make. And right in the middle of our fast, right in the middle of our really seeking to go up to the presence of God, we were coming under attack. Things were happening that were, were actually de trying to deflate us and bring us down. When we come under attack, it's time to take a stand. It's time to press in and push back. And is there a biblical model for this? Is there some experience in scripture that would show us how we should respond? Huh. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in Acts 16, you can read about it. When the Apostle Paul was thrown in prison, why was he thrown in prison? Because he was a Jewish man who stood up for Yeshua. He was thrown in prison after he was beaten. He was tortured. And then he is in the prison. And he begins to worship and pray. <laughs> You know how we can push back? Do you know how we can press in together? By fervent worship and prayer. By saying, I'm not going to allow you to deflate me. The scripture actually says that they were singing in the English hymns. It means psalms. They were singing the psalms. You know, I think that in the middle of the prison, it was dark. It was dirty. The attack was strong upon them. And they decided, you know what, let's worship anyway. I'm curious. I want to know what psalms they sang. Maybe they sang Psalm 27. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Maybe they sang that together while they were locked in that prison. 
Do you feel locked in a prison? האם אתם מרגישים בתוך כלא? You want to break out? אתם רוצים להתפלל? You want to see an end to the darkness? אתם רוצים לראות סוף לחושך? Start worshiping! תתחילו להשתחוות! Start praying! תתחילו להתפלל! Take a stand! תיקחו עמדה! Start to worship and guess what will happen? התחילו להשתחוות ותראו מה שיקרה! The chains will fall off! הכבלים יישברו ויפלו! The prison cell will open! וגם הדלתות של הכלא ייפתחו! הדלתות ייפתחו! And then the people who were doing the assault והאנשים שתקפו אותם will beg you, how can we be saved? הם יתחננו איך אפשר להיוושע! Yeah, we need to pray for those who would assault us. אנחנו צריכים להתפלל עבור אלה שתוקפים אותנו. We need to pray for the enemies of the gospel. אנחנו צריכים להתפלל עבור אויבי הבשורה. Lord, save our Haredi friends and brothers and sisters. אדון, הושע את כל החרדים, האחים והאחיות שלנו. We need to take a stand. אנחנו צריכים לקחת עמדה. We need to worship the Lord. להשתחוות לאדון. God wants to teach us to be hungry for him. אדון רוצה ללמד אותנו לרעוב לו. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 132. בואו נפנה אל תהילים 132. Psalm 132. תהילים 132. It's a psalm that's attributed to Solomon. Uh, he wrote it, אותו, and he remembered his father, אביו, his father David. David. Let's look at this a little. It's another psalm of going up. It's another psalm of going up to the presence of God. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Yaakov. Surely I will not go into the chamber of my house. Or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. David's overwhelming passion was to find a place for the presence of God. Some of us need to pray, make me hungry for the presence of God. David said, I'm not going to sleep. Now, When some of us feel sleepy, how easy is it to deny yourself that sleep? David took it to the extremes. The passion of God was burning inside of him. I will not give myself rest. I don't want to sleep right I, now. I, I'll fight the fact that my eyelids feel heavy. Until I find a place. A dwelling place. For the very presence of God. And we know that David was talking about building the temple. The people got to hear about David's passion to build. In verses 6 to 8, we see that the people hear about it. In verse 7, they say, let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. This isn't David's passion, this is the people's passion. Arise, O Lord, to your rest. Resting place, you and the ark of your strength. And then the people start praying for their leaders. When was the last time you prayed for your leader? When was the last time you lifted up Peter Sukahira before God's throne? When did you lift David Davis up before the Lord? David Davis before the Lord? 
Let your priests, they cried out, be clothed with righteousness and let your saints shout for joy. They prayed for everybody. And unity was prevailing. Because they were praying together for everyone. They were praying that everyone would have righteousness and joy. It was a collective seeking of the presence of God. Then in verse 10, what an amazing verse in the word of God. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointing. Of course, your anointed, the Messiah. Do not turn away the face of the Messiah. Every time you or I refuse to worship God, Every time you or I give way to the, that coldness that attacks us at times, we turn our face away from the Messiah. You can put verse 10 in another way. Some of us know it in the form of a song. Turn your eyes upon Yeshua. Look full in his wonderful face. Do not turn away the face of your anointed. In verses 11 and 12, we see that David accepts he's not the one to build the temple. Some of us don't like the word no. No is an answer. We're seeking God for all kinds of things, praying to the Lord for all kinds of things. And the truth is, some of the time, all we want to hear is yes. And after yes, we ask the question, when? But I want you to know that no is an answer to it. For all of David's passion to build the temple. Uh, in spite of the overwhelming burning desire within him to build this temple. God said, no, you've got too much blood on your hands. And it's interesting that it's Solomon who's remembering this. It's Solomon who's recognizing that in order for him to build, in order for God's people to understand the need to be hungry, they need to understand the hunger of their fathers. Solomon needed to understand the hunger of his father. There is a legacy for us to continue. In verses 13 to 15 of the same psalm, For the Lord has chosen Zion, he's desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision, I will satisfy her poor with bread. The Lord's saying he'll meet all the needs. He'll meet everyone's needs. That when he pours out his provision, the poor and neediest members of our community, they will and are having their needs met. 
But the people didn't have what I'd like to call a handout mentality. They weren't coming uh, uh, to worship the Lord out of their own need. They weren't coming just for a free meal. They weren't coming and they weren't motivated by the fact of their need. They understood that God was going to meet their needs. Let me be radical for a moment. I'll quote a United States president. It was John F. Kennedy who said. John Kennedy See, I go back a bit. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Let me paraphrase that a little. Ask not what God can do for you. Ask what you can do for the Lord. It cannot be that you just come to have your needs met. I'll tell you this, that when the power of the Holy Spirit comes among us, it won't be a case that there'll be uh, any divisions whatsoever. A rich man under the power of the Holy Spirit will be on the floor as equally as the poor man. They won't be coming in order just to be fed. They'll be coming to find out what can we do for God's kingdom. Now look at verse 16. I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. I don't think you can shout aloud for joy quietly. I don't think it's possible to shout for joy and do it in a calm way. I have already confessed before this congregation that I get excited by just something like a, a, a Liverpool goal. And we're scoring a lot of them. Okay. And when they score, I'm yes! But when the presence of God comes and when the priests and the the saints, that's what the scripture says, are in total unity together in worship in the Holy Spirit. They will shout for joy. They will shout hallelujah. Or words to that effect. It happened here once before. It happened here on, on Mount Carmel once before. Now look, I'm... I'm originally, I was born in England. And you may have heard something about the reserved English people. Maybe the Lord missed that one out on me somewhere along the line. But the truth is, I do have my reservations. And you know, because the Lord was saved me in a very uh, charismatic environment, I used to have a problem with something that we all do up front. When we say to people, turn to your neighbor and say, and then you, and some of the stuff that you are, you are asked to say, I don't want to say. But the leader is saying, turn to your neighbor and say, no. Isn't it great to be here? Right. I remember uh, one occasion when I was getting so fed up attending meetings where somebody would tell me to turn to someone and say something. <laughs> That I turned to a good friend of mine sat next to me. And I 
And I said, אמרתי, if you weren't here, I'd have more room to worship. אם, <laughs> אם לא היית כאן, היה לי יותר מקום להשתחוות, אתה מדי גדול. You like that one, right? <laughs> Good. Um, but here's the thing, on Mount Carmel, when Elijah restored the altar of the Lord, and where the fire fell on the sacrifice, the people were instructed to do something they didn't want to do. They were all gathered together. This was the time when God would reveal himself and show who he is. And the people were all gathered in one place. And then Elijah told them to do something that felt a little bit strange. Remember, there hadn't been any rain or water from the skies for three and a half years. שלוש וחצי שנים לא היה גשם מהשמיים. And he tells his servants, get the water and pour it on the altar. והוא מבקש מהמשרתים שלו להביא מים ולשפוך על המזבח. Elijah, are you serious? אליהו, אתה רציני? You want us to take the most precious commodity there is in Israel today? אתה לוקח את המצרך היקר ביותר בישראל, שזה מים היום? Elijah, haven't you been listening to the weather forecast lately? האם לא שמעת את תחזית מזג האוויר? It has rained for three and a half years. שלוש וחצי שנים לא היה גשם. And Elijah said, I know, I prayed it that way. אליהו אמר, אני התפללתי שלא יהיה גשם. But Elijah, we need this water. I mean, it was a hard journey going up. Eliyahu, זה היה מסע קשה למעלה, אנחנו זקוקים למים. We've been here all day watching the crazy people cutting themselves. אנחנו כל היום צופים בעובדי אלילים חותכים את עצמם. You know you get crazy people on the tops of mountains. אתם יודעים שיש אנשים משוגעים על... פסגות הרים. I'm not going to go there now. אני לא אדבר על זה עכשיו. But anyway, they were all gathered together and worshiping the Lord. אבל כולם נאספו ביחד והשתחוו לאדון. But now they were told to make the ultimate sacrifice. עכשיו נתבקש מהם לעשות את הקורבן האולטימטיבי. Take the most precious possession you have. לקחת את הדבר הכי יקר לכם. Take the thing that keeps you alive. לקחת את הדבר ששומר עליכם בחיים. Grab hold of the, the thing that you hope for the most. לאחוז בדבר שאתם מקווים לו הכי הרבה. And pour it out. ולשפוך אותו. Pour it all out over the altar. ולשפוך אותו על המזבח. Hey Elijah, by the way, don't you know something about altars? אליהו, האם אתה לא יודע דברים על מזבחות? If you want the fire to fall, you don't make it wet. אם אתה רוצה שהאש תיפול, לא צריך להרטיב את המזבח. Elijah, cold. Sorry, wet wood doesn't burn so well. אתה לא יודע, אליהו, שעץ רטוב הוא לא, uh, לא בוער מהר. I guess we all have objections to what God would have us to sacrifice. Uh, כולנו, יש לנו מחאות על מה שאלוהים מבקש מאיתנו להקריב. We can all think of some area of our lives that we don't want to let go of. אנחנו יכולים לחשוב על תחום בחיינו שלא רוצים לוותר עליו. God, don't ask me to give that up. אלוהים, אל תבקש ממני לתת את הדבר הזה. Lord, don't ask me to sacrifice that relationship. אל תבקש ממני להקריב את מערכת היחסים הזאת. Elijah said, get hold of that precious commodity, that water. הוא אומר לכם, תיקחו את המצרך היקר הזה שהוא מים. Let go of it. והתפטרו ממנו. God says, let go of what you're holding on to. אלוהים אומר, התפטרו מהדבר היקר ביותר לכם. Let go of it and pour it on the altar. תשפכו אותו על המזבח. Pour it all out. תשפכו אותו. And they were obedient. והם היו צייתנים. He wants us to be obedient. הוא רוצה שאנחנו נציית לו. They did it against their better instincts. הם עשו זאת למרות כל ההתנגדויות הטבעיות שלהם. Everything in their flesh said, don't do it. כל דבר בבשר אמר, אל תעשו זאת. But everything that was from the Spirit of God said, you need to do it. אבל כל דבר מהרוח אמר להם, תעשו, כן תעשו זאת. So they pour it out. אז הם שפכו את המים. And we know what happened. The fire falls. It licks it all up. And then Elijah says, I hear the sound. I hear the sound of abundance. Of what you just poured out. It's coming. 
course they were looking at him again saying have you lost it Elijah? והם חשבו שהוא השתגע. I mean there's not even a cloud. אין אפילו ענן אחד בשמיים. Go look out towards the Mediterranean Sea. לכו לכיוון הים התיכון. See what you can see out there. תראו אם יש עננים. Seven times. שבע פעמים. When everything gets completed. כשהכל הושלם. The seventh time. בפעם השביעית. There's a cloud. הייתה, הייתה, היה ענן. Hey crazy dude. Crazy Ahab! Ahab a mishuga. You better get out of here. Adif sheta rutz mipo. Because I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. Ki ani shomer kol amon ageshem. It's coming like the rain. Ze migia besufa adira. The move of the ruach hakodesh on Mount Carmel will come like the rain. At noah she ruach hakodesh al Carmel tavok kegeshem chazar. Ze ma she anu roim. And then the people did. Something that their flesh didn't actually want to do, but they were no longer in the flesh at that moment. As the fire came down, as the prophets of Baal started to flee, I tell you this, when the presence of God comes in his power, those who who are afraid to be delivered will run away. I tell you this, when the presence of God comes, when the fire falls, then all of the people, all of the priests, all the leaders, and all of the people, all the different kinds of people, כל מיני סוגי אנשים. They will get before the Lord. הם יבואו בפני אלוהים. And they will cry out together. והם יזעקו ביחד. אדוני הוא אלוהים. אדוני הוא אלוהים. The Lord, He is God. אדוני הוא האלוהים. And I believe we should do it today. אני מאמין שאנחנו צריכים לעשות זאת היום. I'm going to tell us that we should all declare this before the Lord. אנחנו צריכים כולנו להכריז זאת בפני אלוהים. אדוני הוא האלוהים. I wonder if we could do this. I wonder if you could suffer that which I've suffered for so long. I don't want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him anything. I want you to tell God. Tell him. Let's do it together, shall we? Let's repeat what the people of God did all those thousands of years ago. But don't forget to bring what you need to bring to the altar. Don't forget to pour out the most precious item. In a moment, we're going to declare three times Adonai who Elohim. We're going to do it corporately together. As we do it, we're accepting that God is God. That he is the sovereign God. That he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That he is the God who is able to heal. And he is the God who will take some of his servants to be with them. Just because he is God. Just because he's sovereign. Because he would teach us his ways and not our ways. We could declare Adonai who Elohim. We press. אנחנו מתקדמים אל המטרה למען הפרס והקריאה הנעלה שלנו במשיח ישוע. היום, באופן קולקטיבי, אנחנו עלינו על ההר הזה. The Lord says to us this morning, Come, let us go up. We've responded to the invitation. We've come up this mountain. We've walked up the driveway. We've walked up the steps outside into this worship building. Come, let us go up. Let's keep going up. And the Lord will teach us His ways. And then the Ruach HaKodesh will come in great power and glory. And when He comes in great power and glory, we will walk in His power. 
I'm going to count. In fact, you know what? I'm going to ask us to stand for a And we're going to do this. As unto the Lord. And you can forgive me if you need to afterwards. I'm going to count to three. And then we're going to say Adonai. Who Elohim. Three times. Is that okay? Can we make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Can we, can we shout for joy for a change? Can we get into his presence together? I think the Lord would do something among us as we declare who he is. And after we've declared him to be our God and King, if you want to come forward for prayer, if please do. If you want to pour some precious thing out on the altar, pour it out. If you want to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, pour what you have on the altar. I'm going to count to three. Maybe I'll do it in Hebrew. <laughs> Aleph, Bet, Gimel. Adonai, who are Elohim? Adonai, who are Elohim? Adonai, who are Elohim? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you come if you need to pour out? If you need to pour out, if you need to pour out, if you need to pour out, the Lord, He is God. Adon, who are Elohim? He is God. Adon, who are Elohim? Come. Bow. Let us go up. Bow when you left when I left. El Har Elohim. Oh, if you feel a burden to just come and pray for the revival. Ima tem masal avo veli itpale. The God has begun among us. She Elohim ye beemet Elohim bekirbeinu. You can come to. As tavo el amizbeach. Come, let us go up. Bow na le. I press. אני מתקדם towards the prize לכיוון הגמול והפרס of the upward journey במסע כלפי מעלה